Hi, this is a video about Bilem Cabbage Down, number 89 in the Essential Elements book, and this is a video specifically for the bass. In the description, there's a link to the main lesson for this video, and that one I'm playing violin, but it goes over a lot of things about this song. Uh, I encourage you to go take a look at that. This one is just a couple of things that are specific about it to the bass. All right. So the first thing is when you watch that other video, there's a full performance of the song where the melody passes around between each of the different instruments. You may notice the fingering that I'm using in that when the melody for the bass comes around. I want to talk about that just a moment. And I think the rest of the things are all the same no matter what instrument you're playing. So get those other things out of that video. All right. When I play this particular tune, on the bass. There's only four notes in it, D, E, F, and G, F sharp and G. To play the G, I'm going to do that G in second position. I do not like to use an open G when I play this tune. And the reason is the fourth finger rule. It's pretty much the same for every instrument. If using your fourth finger instead of your open string makes it so that you can keep everything on one string, then you're going to want to use fourth finger for it. And the way this song goes, F and then G, F and then E, F and then G, F, E, D, there's no reason to play the open G string because you never need the A. You're going to get better tone and you're going to get better results by using the fourth finger. In the long run, it's easier to make that little shift to get to your G than it is to change your bow back and forth across. Plus you get a little bit better tone quality by playing the G on the D string. The thing to recognize though is the best shift into second position is to put your shift in between the E and the F sharp between a one and a two. If you try to do four, four shifting, this song goes pretty slow, at least the way it happens in the book but you're gonna have a really hard time keeping up with it. This shift between E and F sharp can be done quickly. So for instance, I can make that shift really fast over and over again if I'm shifting between the E and the F sharp. If I try to go F sharp to G and back to F sharp all with fours, watch what happens. I can do it a couple of times, but then it breaks down. And I wasn't messing that up on purpose. I just can't do that shift very fast. This shift between a one and a two scales up to speed really well. This shift four to four does not. So I'm gonna play this melody through real quick and I'm gonna show you the fingering that I use. And then you get the rest of the information from the other video. In the book, and in smart music, the tempo is 96, which is pretty slow. If you want to try it faster, you can use the speed controls for YouTube and speed it up a little bit. And a one, two, three. to finish it out. I hope you get the idea from that. One thing I do want to point out, in this bluegrass style you noticed on the repeat, I started with my F sharp finger all the way back here, kind of around an E, and slid up into that F sharp. You may want to experiment with that because that those kinds of slides are part of this style. Now, I hope you noticed that as I was doing that and I was making my shifts, and this is very important, I kept really solid hand position. When I shifted back to the E, I didn't let my hand close up like this. I didn't let my pinky go up like this. I didn't bring my thumb around like this. Go back and watch that again, that as I'm making my shifts, I come back to the E, my hand looks like this. My thumb is around the back. I'm not letting it come around. I'm not letting it get thumbs up. I'm not letting my first finger drop. Keeping that hand position as you make your shifts back and forth, critically important, all right? So I think that's all there is to go over in this particular video. It's like I said, just supplemental for the bass. Look in the description and go back to the main video for the other things about this song. I hope this was helpful. And if you did find this video helpful, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and remember, keep practicing.